Today we're doing another swatch and unbox, and this is with a Banyo watercolor set that I got from Amazon. I've had it for a really long time, and the smell and lack of quality have um, sort of dissuaded me from reviewing them, but I think this is fine for a swatch and unbox. So you can find the link down below to where you can get your own if you so choose from Amazon. And I would have to double check the price, but I would say I definitely paid under 20 for this. And it comes with a bunch of brilliant colors. I would hazard a guess that there are 20 in here. So we are going to go ahead and get swatching. So the lid fits behind the container and it's just a plastic inset. You could remove this if you want. And the inside of the removable lid is painted white and can be used as three painting wells. First things first, we're gonna spray this down with some water. And give it a second to soak in. So if you're looking for more watercolor reviews and tutorials, you can find them here on this channel in my watercolor playlist, but you can also find them at natosoup.blogspot.com in the watercolor basics section. All right, so I've had a couple seconds to soak in. Let's go ahead and get started. And if these aren't too terrible and you guys are interested, I might do a field test with them. And strangely, they're a little less opaque than I thought they'd be. I thought, I mean, because these are inexpensive watercolors, I figured they would be just chock full of optical brighteners and that they'd basically be opaque and therefore kind of hard to use. Uh, so far though, they're actually not that bad. I'm gonna skip white for the time being. And fortunately I got that yellow a little muddy. Let's see if we can get a better rendition of that yellow. There we go. So what happens when you, you uh, swatch black and then turn around and swatch a bright yellow. In fact, these are actually somewhat muted in color, but after doing the Jerry Q swatch set where it was so full of optical brighteners that I really couldn't do any of the techniques I wanted to do, this is a little bit of a refreshing change of pace and a fairly good selection of colors, although some are somewhat similar. All right, and now we'll give these a chance to dry. All right, guys, these Banyo print uh, paints have had a chance to dry. They're a little, of course, they're a little, they're a lot duller than they were when they went down because that's kind of how watercolor rolls. So we're going to do an opacity test, but we're not going to do every color because I do not feel like swatching 20 colors. We're just going to do the ones most likely to have opacity issues. Go ahead. Reactivate my palette and I'll zoom out. And not that every color should be transparent. Um, there definitely are natural opaque colors, naturally opaque pigments. And even in the nicest brands, you're gonna get some variance in opacity. What we're looking for is um, where every color seems to react that way. Like in that Lucas test I recently did, every color seemed to have an opacity problem. Colors like Venetian red, English red, yellow ochre, those are typically more opaque. Zoom in so you guys can see, and then I need to let it dry. So, as you guys can see, some of the colors I thought would be more opaque are not, and then some of them are a little bit more opaque than I'd originally predicted, but all in all, it turned out a little better than expected. I have the Lucas swatch set right here, and as you guys can see, there's a lot more opacity to these colors than to these. 
So, um, if you guys are interested in seeing a field test of this Banyo watercolor set, do let me know in the comments. Um, and if this video is well enough received, I'll make sure to do a field test regardless. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was super helpful to you. And I look forward to seeing you guys again really soon. Bye, guys!